What is happening guys? Hope everyone is doing well. Um, today, I'm gonna be expanding on the power washer setup. If you caught the last couple videos, you'd know that um, we bought a new electric pressure washer. Um, unfortunately, the other one had a bit of a fall. Uh, if you wanna know more about that, go watch the last video that I posted. Yeah, so we ended up picking up a new electric washer and since doing that, uh, I wanted to kind of add to my little pressure washer setup and kind of beef it up a little bit more. Let's go show you exactly what we have planned. As you would have seen in the last video, um, this is kind of the, the current look of the pressure washer setup and uh, we're gonna further improve on that today. I would have always had to kind of wrap the hose around the man door up to the pressure washer. Um, the hose on the, the side of the house here that we had always um, unreal and bring out to the pressure washer. We want to add a nice little quick connect on the outside of the garage here. Something that uh, will allow us to simply connect the hose outside the garage, not have to have anything interfering with the door. And then on the inside, we're gonna make a bit more of a permanent setup where we'll have a bit of a shut off valve right about here and then more of a permanent hose that runs right up top to your pressure washer. Uh, as you can see, we went out, picked up a few fittings. We've kind of got something a bit started. I'll, I'll end up breaking this down a little bit more and showing you kind of what we, uh, what we ended up picking up and how we're going about this, but just to give you a bit of a starting point. But anyways, we're gonna pull this stuff apart, um, open up the vapor barrier and insulation and just kind of figure out the overall distance within the wall and how we can go about making all this work. So let's get at it. And just to kind of give you a rough idea, uh, as you can see, we're gonna actually take these apart, uh, throw some Teflon tape around them, put them back together to get a better idea of, I guess, how they're finally gonna sit because we're gonna lose a little bit of space once we end up tightening everything down. We'll probably end up clamping it to the side of this stud here and then maybe adding another piece of, I don't know, plywood just to give it some more support. But that's what we're thinking. Uh, another reason why I ended up wanting to do this, not just for the hose and the man door. Um, once you get the pressure washer all connected, you're kind of hooped as far as filling up wash buckets. So then I'm stuck going back inside using this kitchen sink, which probably isn't ideal. So this way, um, my goal is to have a short hose running down to the floor that we'll use for the wash buckets. And then on this side, we'll have another hose permanently running up to our pressure washer. One that I don't have to constantly take on and off. So uh, we're gonna get this thing popped apart get some Teflon on that and uh, go from there.
How's that now? Yeah, it's good. Yep. Okay. Are you good or yeah. more? Nope, good. Okay. Okay, we're gonna push it back. So come out here. So now you're just getting the clamps on. So what we should do is we should test it. We want to make sure it doesn't leak, right? Right. So now we're just adding the quick connect to the outside here. That's good. Call okay. it. Any leaks? I don't see any. Looks pretty good. Got a bucket? Yeah, in the bottom of that big tool cabinet. So both these valves are closed. Water is on. No signs of any leaks, which is good. There it is. I think she's done. Well, what do you think? What do you think of that setup? <laughs> huh? Versus uh, versus wrapping the hose around through the man door? Doesn't that look better? It looks so much cleaner. The clear hose will go up to the pressure washer. I actually took the quick connect off of this and put it outside for the hose to click into. So now that this one can actually just be permanently threaded in, seeing we'll never take it off. So this side <clears throat> will go down. I think you're right, just don't over tighten it. Just snug it. You crush the gasket. Okay. And so then this, maybe we should drill the hole for the pressure side. Where yeah. do you want it? Um, well, I don't know. You want it to kind of curl over so it doesn't have such a big bend. Maybe that makes more sense. Well, the hole right here, it's going to be a real sharp bend. Yes. I don't know that it'll bend that much. Right. Because look at that. It's got the rubber on the end. Right. Too. So what I'm saying is maybe it needs to come out, up, loop, and then through. Right. Well, we can grab it. Yeah, because that's the other thing I was thinking about. I was thinking if I have to make the shelf come out further to give this unit more room so that it can, because mm -hmm. that you are right. It's probably gonna be too tight, which is the exact thing I don't want to run into. Right, and that's why I'm thinking this Because thing. it's gonna look so stupid any, any other way. Right, that's why it could be better this way. Well, it doesn't give you the same look. No, it looks dumb. Right, or on an angle. <sighs> I don't like any of that much of a bend. bend without kinking the line yeah unless you know, use the wall cavity for now like you put a little hole in the plastic and go behind mm -hmm. can we do that well of course or is that going to lead to water running down your insulation to your insulation potentially well, only if it, it ever leaked then the water would follow the hose down back does this leak this fitting and so then this thing's gonna come out where exactly? I would just take it out of the floor. Like we're gonna put the insulation vapor barrier, or we just put it right like that. Every time I pull on it, it's gonna rip it out of the vapor barriers. Just put a clamp, put extra clamps. Yeah, that'd be a good idea actually. Right here? Yeah. The test it. The water hooked up. Yes. Let's 
it's a good thing we got a bag of clamps. And then if it just kind of curls around into it like so. Where are we cutting? Uh, here you go. Put it in there. I think that should be good. Ready? The moment of truth. Oh, we got a leak. Yeah, it's leaking right out of this fitting here. Pretty good too. Oh my god! Someone died. It's just water pressure. But who knows? If you want to, we can. Let's just test it again. This whole thing is twisting the tube, okay? Better? Should be. <laughs> Try it again. Good now? Yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, good. I just want to get all this air. So do you want me to make you up a little hose for here? That thing? I think so. Are you ready? Yep. Not too bad. Look at that. So, you can see the water running through all the lines there. The valve is open. And then, no, no kinks. Added a couple clamps. Just to keep the hose where we want it to. And so far, so good. No leaks. And then also what we ended up doing with the inlets and the outlets, because the outlet's on the back, obviously that's where your pressure washer hose has to run out of. And I wanted to keep this whole setup looking pretty clean, so I don't want to end up turning this pressure washer on its side or turning it around backwards. I wanted to keep the front facing out. So what we ended up doing for the time being, obviously when this gets drywalled, we'll have to think of something different. Um, so whether we end up building a bigger shelf so it can come out a little bit further because what's happening right now is the hose wants to end up kinking and we don't want this getting too sharp of an angle out back. So what we did to give us a little more room just because we don't have drywall, uh, we actually ended up cutting into the vapor barrier here and feeding the pressure ho washer hose around back in behind and you can see it funnels out at the bottom. Um, we might end up adding another clamp just down here at the bottom, just to keep the pressure washer hose from wanting to pull out of the insulation. Where is it? it? Wants to come out just like that. Yeah, just like that. So, but no leaks so far, which is good. So now just finishing up, uh, obviously we cut this hose to length. Now this was our scraps. So this is gonna be like the wash bucket. And then I might end up adding a bit of a, some sort of, I don't know, head on the end so I can at least suds up soap in your wash bucket. It's coming together.
All right, guys. I think I'm pretty much done. Just to give you a bit of a, a run through. In the back, you can see where we have the pressure washer line running through, actually back into the insulation in behind. And then it comes out of the bottom. We got another clamp like I showed you earlier, holding that pressure washer hose in place. And we got the one line running to your inlet in the front right here. The line we were just working on. This is just gonna be the hose to fill up our wash buckets. I'll look for a uh, some sort of spray head for this hose. But on this side, you can see I added another uh, clamp here just to help guide the power cord. And then I got everything tied up in the back there. But everything's been nicely tucked away. Like I said, this machine isn't like obviously the most expensive machine, but it's also not the most ideal setup with the inlet being on the front and the outlet being on the back. Ideally, the inlet would be like on the side and the outlet out the front, like my old unit, the K1700 Karcher. Uh, that's how that was designed and it was absolutely perfect. But if you watched the last video, you'd know that I ended up replacing it with this one. So it'll, uh, it'll work for now. In the future, like I said, when we end up drywalling these walls, I'll have to think of something else because obviously I don't want that to be fed back into the wall. So we'll have to think of another solution, either building a bigger shelf or something so that sticks out a little further. It'll work for now. Also went ahead and I added a bit of a lip on the front of the shelf here. If you watched the other video, it's exactly what happened to the Karcher. So wanted to make sure that wasn't gonna happen again. Yeah, as far as the inside goes, I think I covered it all on the outside. You can see everything neatly tucks in like so. I was debating getting a bit of a, some sort of box or something that I could kind of open and close just to hide it. And who knows, maybe I will eventually, but for now, it actually works pretty well. As you can see, no leaks. And on the inside, as you can see, no leaks or anything. So just to give you a bit of an example, here's the other nice part. How sick is that? How sick is that? I can fully close the man door and you still got water. Isn't that amazing? So anyways, let's get the gun plugged up. Look on our water line there. You got full water. I just turned it off. Just drain the line fully. Put our gun away. Voila, we're done. That's as much as you need to do. Unplug the uh, hose from the garage side and just wind it back up, which is super simple. But now on the other hand, say you wanted to fill your wash buckets. All right. We got our hose, pop it in there. Voila. Just like that. That is the best part. And this is why I wanted to do this exact thing. It just cleans everything up. It makes everything easier. Every time I want to wash a car, you're not hauling out a pressure washer, plugging up a million hoses, getting everything ready, taking 10 minutes just to set it up. Everything's ready to go. Overall, just 10 times easier. But anyways, guys, that is, that is everything, I think. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, if any one of you at home are looking to do something similar uh, with your garage setup, either maybe you have a detached garage like myself, uh, or maybe you have a water you know, outlet somewhere on your house and you wanna extend it somewhere, um, hopefully this helps. Super happy with this. It's not like it's like the world's cleanest pressure washer setup by any means, but uh, as far as it goes, this is really all that I need. Um, I just wanted something clean, something simple and cheap, which is exactly this. This, I think we ended up spending maybe, I don't even know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks on fittings and some hose. And that's pretty much all that it costs to do this and a little bit of time, maybe like a day on the weekend. And now as you've seen for yourself, super convenient, just way easier to get everything set up and going. So if you want to clean a car, you're not having to think about setting up your pressure washer for 10 minutes. Anyways, um, 
I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped any one of you if you want to do something similar at your place. And you're going to be seeing a lot more of this when I start cleaning the cars. As I mentioned in the past video, this Subaru doesn't look dirty from here, but if I get up close, look at that. Look at that filth. Filthy. So this thing really needs a bath. So I'm going to be doing a full uh, wash detail on that using the full new setup. So if you want to see more of the setup and this new pressure washer in action, I've actually only washed one vehicle. It worked really well, worked perfectly. Worked as good, if not better, than the Karcher K1700. It has a little bit more gallons per minute, so a little more water flow. Definitely stay tuned because the next video coming out is gonna be me washing the car. Subscribe so you stay notified. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.